Welcome to the Weeb Lounge. This is our review of probably one of the better support characters that has been in the game forever and ever and ever. We are talking about Caster Class Servant. Um, lots of different names. F affectionately known as Waver. I guess. Intro. <laughs> All right, this guy guy goes by a whole bunch of different names. I don't know why. Uh, he's affectionately known as Waver. It's Zhu Liang. It is Lord El Malloy II. It is Waver Velvet. Everyone just kind of calls him Waver. Why? Because he, whenever he casts a spell, it's like he's waving at you or something. I, I yeah. <sighs> Anyways, first skill, and remember this is a support character. First skill. Increases one ally's critical damage for three turns, up to 50%. 50% up for three turns the amount of critical damage. That's pretty significant, but it also charges that person's NP gauge by 30%. I have... I've had this character for a long time. I've used this skill. I've, I've, this skill and all the other ones I've used. It, it just get to the second one. Second one. Second one is party defense up, up to 30%. Reduces the party's damage taken... By up to 500 per hit for three turns. That's pretty good. It's a good defense up. It's a flat damage reduction. With this up, smaller hits will often hit you for zero. But it also gives 10% MP charge to the whole party. Nice little uh, caveat there, right? That is an awesome skill. I have no complaints to that whatsoever. Let's check out his third one. Party attack up for three turns. 30%. Three turns, 30%. That's at max, that's pretty good. Damage plus five, an extra 500. Three turns. So 30% up plus an extra 500 on top of what they would do. I mean, the 500 is kind of minimalistic, but if it crits or chains or goes with other percentages, it's that's pretty good. Then once again, charges the whole party's NP by, uh, by 10%. So two skills to charge uh, 10%. That's 20% to the whole party. A third skill, well, the first skill, first skill, 30% to another one, so that's 50%, 50% on one character, 20% on the other ones. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's pretty, that's, he, you combine him with Merlin, and then somebody else, I mean, that, that's like support craziness, so you, yeah, a lot of people pro have probably done the Merlin waiver, and then someone to do damage combo, it, it, it works, it works really good. His Noble Phantasm, doesn't really do damage unless you consider the poison damage. I don't consider poison damage because it's so minimal and I don't care. Nobody cares. Yeah. But this Noble Phantasm has been incredibly useful. Uh, basically, it's an AOE debuff. Okay? You hit it, reduces all the enemies Noble Phantasm gauge by one tick. So that can kind of, you know, pull your ass out of a fire, actually, if you really, really need it. And if you can chain his Noble Phantasm quick enough, you can pop it multiple times, get, keep that uh, NP gauge down, buy you some time. Until, like, Merlin can charge his invulnerability thing again, you know, if you already used it. On top of that, it's the 150% chance to curse with 1,000 damage for 6 turns. Now, who cares? Even if it's 6,000 damage over 6 turns? I mean, I, you fart out one arts card for random whoever, and that's pretty, you're good. It, that's worthless. 150% chance to reduce their defense for three turns. That, it's chance-based, but I have never seen it not hit. Unless there was, you know, some kind of special skill or special thing on the mob. So, defense down up to 50%, and that's where the NP level comes into play for this guy. NP1, 30%. NP5, 50%. I'll go into the NP thing whole when I make my judgment later on, which you guys probably already can guess. There's one more thing, and that's the overcharge, a stun effect. I don't like chance-based stuff, so I always take this as, like, an added bonus, okay? has a 50% chance to stun at Noble Phantasm 100%, just normal. 500% is 80%. Is this guy worth overcharging? 
you know, if you're ch chaining a whole bunch of double phantasms and the other ones you don't care to overcharge, yeah, overcharge this one. Why not? If you can get an extra stun out of it, go for it. Otherwise, yeah, you, you take it or leave it. It can save you. It can just be a nice little convenience. That's usually how we see it. But anyways, you know, there's not much to show, but let's go ahead and show you anyway, because I said so. All right, now, generating waivers, noble phantasm is generally not an issue, especially with all the other crap that uh, he has going on. He can raise everyone's uh, noble phantasm gauge by 20% and then an extra 30% on top of that for any one person. It's not much of an issue. Um, I just have a couple arts lined up here. I'm going to do an arch chain with one of our Odysseus. Hopefully the Odysseus doesn't kill it so that we can get his going, but we'll be able to get it going anyways. There's nothing to worry about. But let's see. I'm going to use my main guy and two here. So basically we got Waver, two Odysseuses fighting some cocks. Look at that. You guys know a phantasm without any issue. That was... It was at 45 as I was that 109, 103, 10, it don't matter. 109, yeah. It has, it don't matter. <laughs> All right, so we have little cock, medium cock, and a guy who's just being a cock. It's a, it's a big dragon. So, Waver doesn't do any damage. He just debuffs. Helps other guys do a little bit of damage. So, see his skills or whatever, you just pop this. There's 10% for everybody and attack damage. Pop this. 10% for everybody, plus defense. Somebody's short on some NP, well, he doesn't really need it because he can just hit that button. So let's go ahead and just buff the crap out of everything, I guess. Oh, we don't need to do that. Yeah, we do need to do that. I'm to put it on here. It does not really matter. But I'm going to do his Noble Phantasm first. Second, actually. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Waver's Noble Phantasm first. It puts a defense down, a stun, reduces NP gauge. You won't see him reduce the NP gauge because they ain't got the NP gauge because they're going to die too quick. It doesn't matter. Odysseus, whichever one I pick, the one uh, the one that's minor or the one that I pulled in for support, things are dead. It don't matter. So Waver followed up with Odysseus's. And Odysseus is a really good character. I want to do get a review on him pretty soon, too, but I don't have him maxed out yet. It looks like the stun missed on most of those. Oh, the stun hit on one. Now, this is a 50% stun. Of course, our luck, you know. Now, let Odysseus play out. He gets a little bit of benefit from that defense down and whatever else. And, yeah, yeah he murdered him. Now don't be impressed by that. And this, this is I'm doing the event. He gets 100%. He, his his damage is doubled, so reduce that by half. Yeah, yeah. And on this one, well, that's irrelevant to the review because we did what Waver needs to do. Now, if I wanted to, let's say I want this guy over here, the one I just used the Noble Phantasm on. He's at 66%. This would give him another 30. He's almost ready to do it again. He's almost ready to do it again. Do I have a thing? Nope. But, you know, look at this. He can do it again. Right now. Of course, I could have just hit the other Noble Phantasm and been done with the fight, but that's how, how good Waver can be. And those skills actually come back, I think, if you max them out, it's just within six turns. Uh, let's see. No, it's a... Uh, his first skill will come back in five. His other two skills will come back in six. So you actually get it back in a pretty decent amount of time. And I'm not concerned about this at all. So I'm, I'm just hitting buttons. But that's Waver. Waver's really good support. Combine him with Merlin. Combine him with, I don't know, uh, Gene Ruler. Gene Ruler is good for all the defense, for uh, skills and vulnerability. And then you got Waver there buffing up uh, attack defense, noble phantasm gauge. You know, everything will work out. Waver's a good one to add to your team. He will be used in a lot of your boss fights and challenge quests. All right. So you see him in action getting his double phantasm easy very easy he has three arts cards to work with he can chain them he can do them himself or whatever getting his arts is no problem plus the skills that he does the party wide np up he gets his own np it, he's going to get it it's not going to be any kind of issue uh damage 
he actually does some decent damage with just his regular cards. I mean, even his arts cards actually do kind of hit rather well. His overall attack power is low. It's, it's more, it's almost like high four star level actually, but it, it, it can do its damage. It can do what it needs to do. So the Noble Phantasm itself, all the skills, the support base, the NP tick down, the defense down, all that other stuff, it is incredibly useful. You will find this incredibly useful in boss fights, uh, challenge quests, all this other stuff. He always seems to come in handy somewhere. Is it a person that you're going to have in your group every single time? Actually, even when you're farming, he's kind of nice to have because you sit him over in the corner and the first round, if you're doing a farming quest, the first round you fight normally, and then the second round you have your NPs or you're almost there. You just start hitting his stuff, boop, 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 get your NPs, and you start farming quicker, right? So actually, yeah, throwing it, throwing him in there can actually help. So I guess the thing is, do you want him in your party? Yeah. This guy, he like there's there's Merlin for support class, and then there's uh, Waver. Now you see, I barely moved my hand there, okay? Waver is incredibly good. He's almost as good as Merlin, but Merlin has the, a few of those clutch features. His Merlin's Noble Phantasm is a little bit more useful. And Merlin's invulnerability for the entire party is clutch. Uh, Waver can do a lot of other things, and it is all very useful, but not quite there. Now, if you already have Merlin... Is it worth getting Waver? Yeah, it still is. It is very much worth it because them two comboed with a DPS, my God, you know, you're going to be supported and supported and supported and your DPS is going to go buck wild there. You know, it's, it's a no-brainer. So yes, when he shows up, you definitely want him. Do you want more than one copy of him? Well, 30% base, defense down for Noble Phantasm 1, up to 50 for 5. He's in the general gotcha. I would say if you do not have him, try to get a single copy. Just a single copy. That's really all that you need. But if you get more copies of him later on, or you just feel like rolling to try to get more, it ain't, ain't going to hurt. It's only going to help. Because as much as you're going to use this guy in boss fights and everything, having his Noble Phantasm higher is definitely not something that I'd pass up on. So, yeah, go for it. Highly, highly recommended. Highly recommended in a group with Merlin. Highly recommended in a group even with uh, Gene Ruler. And highly recommended that you like, subscribe, hit that notification button. We'll see you in the next video.